to the Title Town Huddle on the GruelingTruth.net. Welcome to the Title Town Huddle on the GruelingTruth.net, where the legends speak. I'm Joe Pritchard, and with me, as always, is Aaron Zepnik. Aaron, how is it going tonight? Uh, it's been a long week for uh, it only being Wednesday, but uh, we're fighting through it, and football's getting us by. We've got another week of football starting tomorrow, and, you know, Packers with a big game this week against the division rivals, so it's uh, it's a little more exciting that the week's coming to an end here, only two days left, so we're plowing through it. Yep, and a week is a little bit easier to get through with a Packer victory on on Sunday here, and we'll get to that in just a, in just a few minutes here. But first of all, I think we know where Josh Fitton's money went. It went to David Bakhtiari, who signed a four-year extension today. Yeah, I was a little shocked that uh, that he got what he did, and uh, I think it was kind of a a moment of Ted Thompson and and the Packers saying, "See, if you just shut your mouth and go along and get along." If you perform on the field, you'll get paid. Uh, Bakhtiari has had his weaknesses, but he's also been uh, been pretty solid against some of the best defensive ends in big games. So I think he um, has a little bit of a problem with the bull rush, but uh, hopefully he's gotten that figured out. And uh, I think it's uh, it's good that we're locking you know a guy that's protecting Aaron's backside up and. Uh, Hopefully they have enough money left for the, you know J.C. Treader and T.J. Lang and Eddie Lacy and these other guys that are coming up. So I, I like the move, uh, you know, to get them signed. But uh, I wonder how much of it was a stick it to sit in type thing. It could have also been the plan going forward anyway, given that uh, left tackle is seen as more of a premium position than a left guard would be, regardless. Uh, depending uh, on whoever you're going to have at those positions. You're going to pay your left tackle more than you're going to want to pay your left guard at points here. So that could have very well been the plan from the get-go is, is what I'm thinking here. And, and there's some validity to that, but do you think, I mean, I'm, I'm green and gold through and through, but do you think David Bakhtiari is a top five lineman, uh, even left tackle in the league? He's uh, getting tough. top five left tackle money. And, you know, you have a Pro Bowl guard that, you know, has been a staple of your offensive line, 112 out of 114 games. I, I don't I don't understand why. Obviously, you know, I'm not behind the scenes and I don't see what was said behind closed doors and stuff, but, you know, it just seems a little bit odd that they would, you know, a week later basically sign back Tiari to a top five offensive lineman contract. It seems like, it, yeah, it just seems that the left tackle position uh, tends to get a lot more attention. It is the glamour position of the of the offensive line if there is such a thing here. Uh, and the fact that they came through with this extension sh- shortly after the move kind of leads me to believe that was the plan all along. Uh, I'm a I'm little bit less likely to think that it's a stick it to sit in type situation here. Uh, it may have just been the fact that the plan did not include Sitton that caused all the friction to begin with. And, and that could be, too, and, and you're probably right. I just think that um, he he he's getting good money. I hope he lives up to it. That, that's all. Yeah, it seemed like from what I was seeing today here that uh, at least uh, the people are saying the right things there, and Rogers is saying, uh, things of the sort that makes it sound like he is pleased with the deal, making sure that his backside is covered. Not that you expect to hear anything else, but uh, that they are saying the right things at this point. Uh, so hopefully it continues, it goes forward, and ends up being a good signing for the Packers here. Uh, now we do have another roster note to make or to talk about here. Uh, seems like Sam Shields is still in the concussion protocol, which makes me wonder about his availability for next week here. Now, when you let me know before the show you wanted to talk about the depth at the corner position, what do you make of all this? Well, Sam Shields actually, I, I came across a pretty startling stat. Since 2010, uh, Richard Sherman is leading the NFL in interceptions for active players. And second on that list, believe it or not, is Sam Shields. And I think Sam Shields being the 
you know, the best corner on our team for sure. If he's out this week against Stephon Diggs and the Minnesota receiving core, we could be in trouble if they have, you know, anybody that can throw the ball to these guys uh, from the quarterback position. I'm a little bit more nervous with Shields out uh, than I am if he if he's playing. Now, you know, they got the Gunther and, you know, some of these younger guys that can step in, but as you saw against Jacksonville, you know, some of these guys are going to take their lumps, and I uh, I can't remember if it was Rollins or Randall that made the nice play at the end of the game to preserve the win. But, um, you know, for the most part, I think it was Demarius Randall got benched for, for a lot of the game because of his play. So, um, you know, it kind of scares me. The depth of the corner position isn't what uh, I think a championship-caliber team needs as far as the talent. Now, Grant, they talk about the flexibility with Micah Hyde and some of these other players. Flexibility is great, but having two, you know, solid corners out there is very important when you're going to try to win, you know, an NFC championship or even a Super Bowl. Yeah, I guess our best hope is that Shields is going to be recovering soon from this, but with concussions, you just never do know. Now, over the past few few off seasons it seems like the Packers have placed a premium on the position and it seems like it may pay off if we do lose shields for quite some time here. Uh, you did mention Randall Randall and Rollins' struggles, uh, but they're both, I uh, believe, second year players. Uh, they still have a lot of room to grow. Hopefully they won't be asked to grow too quickly here. Uh, but it's nice to have a little bit of that depth where you're not too, too worried about losing a guy for just one game here. Um, might also be a chance for Ladarius Gunther to get a little bit more um, playing time out there. Uh, it seems like he won everybody over in camp last year. I haven't heard his name as much this year, but hopefully he still have, has the skills that he was flashing last, uh, last preseason. Yeah, and, you know, I understand these guys are young players and they're they're um you know they're they're growing but Aaron Rodgers like I said before his uh his window is closing and I don't think he's going to play another 6 8 years maybe he will but how many more chances do you get at the big one and you know we let Tremont Williams go um whether you agree or disagree with that move, let Casey Hayward go, let Devon House go. Eventually you can't keep letting a top two or three corner on your team go, or you have to keep rebuilding the position and rebuilding the position. Eventually you have to make a splash either in free agency or keep the guys and sign your own and work on that side of the ball because what's been our Achilles heel the last couple of years? We lose a playoff game because of our defense or special teams. So these guys that are playing a a significant role on defense would be special teams players, but now they're stepping into the significant starter role, and now our special teams are suffering because there's the next guy, you know, in line playing that. And some of these guys play special teams too, like Rollins, Randall, and Hyde. But, you know, Casey Hayward was, was was a pretty good corner, and I know he had some of his penalties and reminded me a lot of Terrell Buckley because he was always the one talking. But um, I just I'd like to see some stability at that position. Yeah, I kind of involuntarily winced when you brought up Buckley's name. Uh, <laughs> I still remember draft day uh, in '92, hoping against hope that the Packers would pick Vincent over Buckley. But what did I know? I was only rooting for the Badger, not uh, not really knowing how the careers would turn out. But, yeah, but that one just kind of makes me shake my head still. But uh, let's move let's move uh, ahead here in the show. Let's talk a little bit more about this Jacksonville game because we've been talking about the defensive struggles. Now, the run defense was on its game after the first few plays. Uh, they also seemed to keep a cap on top of the Jacksonville receivers, but the intermediate pass game, especially uh, when it – when they appeared to have zone looks, uh, Jacksonville just took the Packers apart. What did you see out there? Well, I saw a couple linebackers, I think, that were still thinking uh, instead of playing. I think the game's going to be a little bit fast for Blake Martinez in the, in the regular season here. 
Um, Julius Thomas, you know, exploited our, our weaknesses on defense, and I think, uh, you know, if, if Minnesota can get Kyle Rudolph the ball in the middle of the field, and it, look, the T.J. Yeldon is no Adrian Peterson, and I know Adrian Peterson didn't have a strong game against Tennessee, but Tennessee's run defense is actually not bad. And, um, you know, 19 carries for 31 yards, boy, I see a much more productive day out of Adrian Peterson this week than last week. And uh, if we can stop the run, I think we we obviously beat them. So hopefully uh, there's some emphasis put on that this week. Stop the run, watch the tight end in the middle of the field, and, uh, you know, I think that would be my two main focuses of, of worry right now with the Packers' defense. Now, you've done much more coaching uh, than I have ever been able to. Uh, did you see any scheme issues with this, or was it just simply Jacksonville being better as far as personnel went uh, with their offense against our defense? I, th- I think at this level it's mostly matchups. I think Jacksonville got some personnel matchups that they liked, and I think they took advantage of them. Again, you know, with with Ryan and Martinez, you know, they had to cover at times, and um, even Nick Perry and, and Clay Matthews is decent in coverage, but you want him rushing the passer, especially on third down, and uh, everybody knows that. So, I mean, the guys that they had covering, you know, I think there was a couple of communication breakdowns as well. I don't know how much of it was scheme. I, I, I really couldn't tell you without being at practice and hearing what their game plan was and stuff like that. Um but what I do think is that the communication issues and the uh, blown coverages and stuff that that's got to get cleaned up. And I'm I'm hoping it was just you know week one, some youth, some continuity will uh, hopefully help that. I'm I'm really the weak spot on our defense. I think is our middle linebackers, and I'm hoping that you know they grow quickly. Uh, Joe Thomas, you know when he got the ball off the tip. Uh, He's around the ball, and uh, I like the kid, and uh, I'm not sure how much he'll be in the future plans to start or, you know, if he's a situational guy, I'll have to keep more of an eye on that. But uh, just to touch on your point, I I don't know. Yeah, coaching is one thing, but, you know, not being there to see, you know, what they're talking about and, uh, you know, know what their game plan is. But, Number one, I think every team's game plan is stop the run. Right, and they certainly did seem to do that after the uh, first drive where Yelton ripped off a few runs. All of a sudden, he was getting nowhere, and that's a great thing to see, uh, especially from from what I'm from what I'm understanding of the three four defense. It's a little bit tougher to stop the run with only the three big bodies up front, uh, but they seem to be rise to the challenge. Now, of course, this week's going to be a little bit uh, tougher to do with Adrian Peterson and a strong Vikings run game. Uh, but let's, yeah, let's go ahead and talk offense here for a bit. Uh, we did get to see um, Aaron Rodgers just seem to do Aaron Rodgers things, especially with his feet this week. Uh, very mobile, very able to get out of trouble. Uh, what did you think about the offense, the offense in total here? I think they lacked the um, the explosive plays, but I think that'll come. I think they did a good job sustaining a couple drives, uh, especially the drive right before halftime, the touchdown to Adams, which was a great catch. The the things that concern me about the offense is that a couple of times we started on our own two or three yard line, we didn't get a first down. We kind of three and out, and I think McCarthy is very conservative around his own goal line. Uh, and I think if you look back and watch some games you, in the past, you'll see that as well. Instead of, like, trying to throw it out of there, he always seems to run, run, pass. And I think that's a great time to throw it deep, and I, you have a lot more field to play with. I think that's a great time to, um, you know, run a waggle-type play and get your tight end involved right away, you know, pick up seven, eight yards if you can, and then you're looking at a second and three, then you can start running the ball a little bit. But I I think we need to throw the ball more on first down, uh, especially when we're pinned. And uh, I think we need to have that killer instinct. And, you know, there was a a couple times in the second half where I'm watching the game and I'm saying, man, we score a touchdown here, I think it's over. 
you know, I think then we'll start to kind of lean on them and start running the ball a little better. Um, that never really happened, and Jacksonville's a scrappy team. They just never went away. No, and they seem to have a pretty decent overall game plan as far as keeping the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands. I don't have the time of possession numbers in front of me, but I can I cannot imagine the Packers won the time of possession. Uh, it just seemed like Jacksonville had the ball and sustained drive after drive after drive with the defense, keeping them out of the end zone for the most part, especially at the end. Uh, but we didn't get to see all that much control of the ball from the Packers. Uh, now, I did notice it just felt like the receivers were getting open a little bit more often. Uh, I do believe Adams had an up-and-down day, but a little bit more up than we, we've been used to seeing out of him. And I don't think we saw a whole lot of Betty Lacey, did we? Uh, we saw a couple of nice runs, but that's about all we saw of him. He had 61 yards, and time of possession real quick. Jacksonville had 31-23. We had 28-27. Uh, so it was pretty close. And um, I think that the time of possession is, is misleading. I think Jacksonville had the ball a lot more in the second half. Um, I'm sorry, in the first half. And I think the Packers kind of caught up a little bit after half. But um, I think that was partially because we had a lead and we were trying to run clock a little bit too. And, um, you know, we like I said, we could just never put that one drive together to put them away. When we were up by a score, we had a couple different opportunities to at least put a field goal up or, or some points and make it a two-score game. We never got a chance to really do that. So... Um, I'm hoping that, that that changes. We need we need to uh, put the drives together when they count. Like the Patriots, when they're up a touchdown, you see, you know, that's when they play their best. Like that's when they're like, okay, let's gas pedal, let's put another score on the board and get up, you know, two possessions. When you do that, teams start to press a little bit. So yeah, I did help not defense see a well. whole. Yeah, I did not feel like there was a whole lot of killer instinct in this game. But it did it never did feel like the Packers were out of control of this one either at any point. I mean, early on, uh, it felt a little bit dicey with uh, Jacksonville getting out to score some early points here. But there was really no point where it didn't feel like the Packers, with the, where the Packers were close to being out of the game either. It just felt like they were, like you were saying, just one big play or one big drive away from putting it away. And it didn't happen until very, very until under what twenty seconds to go in the game when they finally made the uh, finishing play to finally put the uh, nail in the coffin there. Uh, now it kind of feels like we're rather negative though, given that they've had, given that they came away with a twenty-seven to twenty-three victory on the road. Uh, never easy to win on the road in the NFL. Uh, and what was what was your final impression of this game? Well, yeah, we talked a lot about the negatives and what we need to work on. As Packer fans, I think we have high expectations. Uh, I know I do. And when Aaron Rodgers throws for less than 200 yards, you know, it, it makes you scratch your head and go, how do we put up 27 points? Lacey didn't have a big day. We only had, you know, 95 yards rushing total, um, 294 yards of total offense. But we uh, we got a short field on the turnover once, um, put up the big – the big score before half, I think, was definitely a, a helping factor. But uh, a road win in the NFL, especially against an up-and-coming team like Jacksonville that may contend for that uh, AFC South division, I think is a huge win. Uh, it it kind of stinks that we got to follow it up with a road game at Minnesota right away when they're opening up their new stadium, which I'm sure we'll get into here in a minute. But, you know, we could be worse. It, you know, we're one and all. We have some things to work on. And uh, if I'm Mike McCarthy right now, I'm not being, um, I'm not settling for anything. We're we're one and all. That's it. We're it's a 16 game season. Yep. When they when they drop drop the playoff schedule, they don't ask how by how much. They just ask how many did you, did you win. And the Packers are one and zero as of this week here. And hopefully going into next week, it'll be two and zero. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take just a short break here, and we'll be back uh, to preview the Minnesota game. Get 
It is the title town huddle with Joe Pritchard and Aaron Zepnick on thegruelingtruth.net. And yeah, welcome back to the title town huddle here at thegruelingtruth.net. Uh, we spent the first half of the show talking about a Packer contract extension, a uh, little bit of a depth issue, and went over the Jacksonville game. Now let's talk about the upcoming game in Minnesota. Aaron, had, like you were mentioning, it is a um, first for Minnesota. It is their brand new stadium, and they're going to be hosting the Packers here. So you get got to believe they're going to be fired up this week. I would think so. Yeah, opening their new stadium, and I, I'm very hopeful the Packers will spoil the party. You know, Chicago came into our house last year and spoiled the Brett Favre party in the rain, and uh, I think we can do the same for yep, uh, Minnesota. Be, yep, it's going to be a prime time game, a 7.30 start here, so the Eyes of the Nation will be on this one here. And uh, the question is, though, who, who will the nation be watching as the Minnesota Vikings starting quarterback this next week? You know, on the, I did the NFL Pick'em show last night, Joe, with uh, with with my good pastor and our good friends, Matt Anderscavage and uh, Mark Cooper and stuff, and uh, Brian Schmidt. And uh, I picked Minnesota, and then today I was reading an article that said, actually it was a, it was a tweet on Twitter, and it said um, that Mike Zimmer is not even announcing to his team who they're starting this week because it leaked out last week that Sean Hill was starting. He has not made a decision. To me, that spells trouble. And if you don't know as your as a quarterback, unless the quarterback knows and he's just not telling anyone, how do you prepare yourself? I know everyone says, you know, oh, I prepare like I'm starting. I prepare like I'm starting. Well, that's all well and good. But who's getting the first team reps? Who's really getting the timing down with these young receivers? And Neither one of these quarterbacks has spent that much time. Let's remember, you know, Teddy Bridgewater took all of the first-team reps until he got hurt. Um, I, I don't see how that can be a good mix for Minnesota. Their defense is strong. It worries me a little bit. But with Aaron Rodgers, I think that that's an even, you know, Aaron Rodgers versus their defense, even even matchup. But – our defense versus their offense, if we can stop Adrian Peterson, like I said, and limit Kyle Rudolph over the middle of the field, I think we win. And I think it will be a close game. I really do. Right. So, so really the two options they have are, of course, Sean Hill, uh, the veteran who's been a backup for most of his career. He did get some starts with Detroit, if I'm not mistaken, back around 2010 here. Or you have the big money Sean or Sam Bradford. Uh, who just came over in a trade and may not have the full playbook down. Now, Minnesota did come away with a win last week in Tennessee, doing the same thing the Packers did, uh, going into an AFC South uh, stadium and coming away with a victory. Now, it didn't seem like their offense was very productive at all. It was defense that put them on the board for the most part. Uh, Does their big play defense worry you at all if the Packers are able to stifle the Vikings offense. Yeah, and I think that I, th- I think that the matchup that I want to see is our receivers versus their secondary and their receivers versus our secondary. And if Sam Shields plays, then I think we have the edge. All right. So you're liking you're liking what you're seeing so far. There's still some quarterback questions here. We, of course, have uh, mentioned Adrian Peterson in the strong run game throughout the show, but how much could a run game take? How far can a run game take you in the NFL these days if you don't have a passing game to back that up? Well, you know the old saying run the ball and stop the run, and you win. I, I think them are the two main focuses. If we can run the ball with effectiveness on their defense, and we can stop Adrian Peterson and limit him, you know, if we can do what Tennessee did, if we can hold him to two yards or less per carry, I, I think we're we're destined to win the game, and maybe big. If uh, if he has a, you know, a 200-yard day or, you know, one of those 150-yard days, it could be a close game that we might have to pull out in the end with, with the arm of Aaron Rodgers. 
I, I would like to think that Sunday night football, it's going to be the home opener for them. They're going to be pretty ready to play. So I think it all depends on who runs the ball better. No, and with Minnesota, we know what they can do on the ground. Uh, but if the Green Bay defense is geared to stop that, you have to wonder if the Vikings can overcome that with the passing game here. Now, we know Sean Hill is a little bit more of a game manager. Sam Bradford is a little bit more of a big play quarterback, but he also tends to make mistakes. So I guess I'm going to put you in Mike Zimmer's shoes here for a second. So you had to make the call on this game just based off of doing that. Well, which way do you think you go with that? Do you try to beat the Do you try to beat the Packers um, and hope that Bradford doesn't make mistakes for you, or do you go with a conservative game plan, trust your run game, and hope that your defense can keep Aaron Rodgers down? I would go with Sean Hill only because he's a, like you said, he's he's kind of the equivalent to Trent Dilfer back in 2002, where he had a really strong defense. And they went to the Super Bowl with the Ravens against the Giants. He was a game manager. And you don't need to win the game. Just don't lose us the game. It's kind of what, you know, Jay Cutler's been asked to do in Chicago, but he just can't get it through his head. Um, Sam Bradford, I think if he starts, there's a chance he doesn't finish the game because he's so injury prone. Um Minnesota last week did not have success running the ball. They did not have a big day, but they did actually have more total offense than the Packers. So it's tough to say. I mean, I think you play the game manager. If I'm Mike Zimmer, why bench a guy when you just won a game with him? Let's pick a score for this one here, like we did last week here. Uh, You said that today you're thinking the Packers are going to be the victors here. What do you think the final score is going to be in this one? I'm going to say 23 to 20 Packers, and I think we, um, I think we win it on a Mason Crosby field goal in the last minute. All right, I'm thinking similar to you, but I think the Packers pull away in the last five minutes and make it a little bit of a wider score. I was thinking 24 to 14 in this one here. I'm just hoping that the run defense could be as effective as it was last week. And I think if they do that, I don't, I'm not too worried about the Vikings beating us through the air here. Uh, But with that said, I guess, uh, do you have any final thoughts for this week? Just one thing I wanted to add, Sean Hill threw for more yards than Aaron Rodgers last week. (laughs) That just doesn't seem right, does it? No, and they had two scores from their defense, so that tells me that, yeah, they're moving the ball, but in the red zone they're they're faltering. So, uh, or you know, they're not putting up touchdowns. It's been a lot of field goal or defensive points for them so far. We're only one game in, so you never know who's going to do what. Um, I think if one game decided your season, you know, it would be a big difference, but. Uh, you got to play the game, and I think I think we win a close game and uh, spoil their party. All right, so I guess we will be back with you next week then uh, to talk about the game that we just previewed here, the matchup in Minnesota. And as we keep going, a few more pieces of the puzzle will keep being added, and we'll just keep uh, watching the NFL season unfold. Uh, until next week then, this is Joe Pritchard with Darren Zetnick. Uh, this is the title town huddle at the growing truth.net where the legends speak. Thank you for listening to the title town huddle on the grueling truth.net.